Dude, check this out. Eh? Hmm, not bad. Too bad you couldn't speed yourself out of that ugly ass shirt. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. Well, it's week three of season three, and you'll never guess what we're doing. Next week, we're beside ourselves with yet another sweet reverse flash effect. Oh yeah, if you watch that, then you probably already know. Anyway, here's the request. Micah Brown asks, could you make the reverse flash duplicate when Dr. Wells was about to kill Cisco? Well, I already said I would, so let's do it. In order to complete this effect, you'll need to shoot two plates, one with your actor on one side performing, and then just have him move over to the opposite side and be as still as possible. And by two plates, of course, I mean three, because we also need one plate with nobody in it. Now that I think about it, we're doing this ass backwards. The speed mirage should have come first. Well, I guess that means the whole season's ruined. Okay, enough of that crap, we have a tutorial to do. So guys, just like with our flash hand face tutorial, I've already got both my clips set up in a comp on top of each other, all ready to go. Our first step is gonna be making that blurry back and forthy part. So let's start by grabbing our pen tool, and then we're going to draw a mask all the way around our actor. Now it doesn't have to be super clean, but just try and not make it too crappy. We'll then turn off our bottom layer. Now that we have our actor isolated, let's head up to composition, save frame as, and let's save a copy as a PSD file. I'm gonna name mine still. We'll then import that back in for later on. Now that we have that done, let's turn our bottom layer back on. Our next step is to grab the pen tool once more, and this time we'll be masking our top layer right down the middle here, like it is. We'll then feather that out a crap load because I lit this badly and cast shadows on my green screen like an idiot. Our next step is to add a new adjustment layer. Once we've done that, let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen, and add our good old buddy box blur. And at this point, if you don't know what we're doing, I really can't help you. Ah, just busting your chaps. Let's change the radius to 14, the iterations to 10, and the blur dimensions to horizontal. Hold the Alt key and hit the stopwatch on iterations. Type this expression, wiggle, space, bracket, 20, comma, five, end bracket, and then let's click out of that expression. We'll then duplicate this adjustment layer, name one far, and name one close, and then we'll turn off both layers. From there, grab the pen tool, we'll then select each layer individually, and draw a mask on both iterations of our actor on those separate layers. Let's highlight both layers, hit F, and feather them both out around 45 pixels. You can always collapse down the mask menu and adjust the mask expansion to make sure your actor is fully covered by the blur effect too. Next, let's turn off the blur for now and drop that still in. Since our actor is closer in 3D space, we're going to animate in 3D space. So let's enable 3D right here. Let's skip forward, say, four frames, so we have some footage of our actor before he moves across. Let's then trim that part of our clip. Next, hit P to bring up our position controls, and let's hit that stopwatch. From there, let's skip forward two frames and move that still over to the other side, and adjust the Z space so that it roughly matches the scale and position of our actor. Once you're happy, copy our start keyframe, skip forward to frame 13, add a keyframe, Skip forward one more frame, and let's paste that copied keyframe. From there, we'll highlight both keyframes here, copy them, and just start pasting them all along the timeline until you reach the end. Next, hit T to bring up opacity, scrub back to our first frame, and hit the stopwatch. We'll then skip to frame seven, and turn it down to zero. We'll then scrub forward to frame 13, add a keyframe, skip forward one more frame, and then crank it up to say 25%. We'll then turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer. Let's check out a preview. As you can see, our still skips to the other side, fades out, and then starts darting back and forth really quick. Now it's time to set up our footage and adjustment layers a little more. Let's do the footage first. With our Far Actors footage selected, let's scrub to frame four and hit Control Shift D to split the clip. 
We'll then head to frame 15 and trim the clip to start then. If you find that your actor has moved outside your blur mask or isn't quite where you want them to be, just scrub through the clip until you find the part of the shot you like. No one will notice since it's covered by our blur layer. You can also split the adjustment layer and draw a new mask if you want. Either way is good. Our next step is to grab our blur layer on top of our far actor layer, head back to the first frame, hit T to bring up opacity, crank it down to zero, skip ahead four frames and crank it up to 100. That'll make it nice and smooth. Once that's done, let's focus on our actor up close. Let's select our footage layer, head to frame seven and trim the clip to start here. Let's then select the corresponding adjustment layer and perform the same trim. We're all done with that now, but as you can see now, we've run into a little problem. Between frames one and seven, we only have half a clip. So here's how we fix that. Remember how I said at the start we also need a blank plate with nothing in it? Here's where that comes into play. Let's head over to the project window, grab your blank plate and drop it right down the bottom of our comp. If you adjusted the scale or position of either of your other clips in the comp, just copy and paste those settings directly on our background plate. Done. From there, let's turn on that close adjustment layer and see what our shot looks like. It's not bad, but one thing that's sticking out is that far actor just sort of boom appears when the effect starts going. So let's fix that. Scrub forward to frame 15, hit T to bring up the opacity settings and we'll crank it down to zero. We'll then skip ahead, say three or four frames and then crank it up to 100. Now let's check it out. Not bad at all. To make the shot of the blur fading out and revealing our speed mirage is the exact same method. The only difference being this time we're facing straight on the camera and the effect has taken place so we only need one adjustment layer with the blur. To fade out the effect, we'll head first to frame 15, select our still image, hit T to bring up opacity, hit the stopwatch, move forward 10 frames and crank it down to zero. We'll then move up to the adjustment layer, scrub back to frame 15, bring up the opacity settings, hit the stopwatch, but this time we'll move a few frames past our stills keyframe before cranking down to zero. That way it looks like our actor has stopped moving before the speed mirage solidifies. Let's check out a preview. Not bad, but my speed mirage is moving a little. And in the show, he didn't, so let's quickly fix that. Select your footage layer for your speed mirage, right click, head up to time and select freeze frame. Done. No more movement and our shot is now finished and ready to show. Add up all of those steps and you'll get something like this. Dude, check this out. Not bad. Too bad you couldn't speed yourself out of that ugly ass shirt. So that's the reverse flash after image. Yes, a speed mirage if you will. It's not overly complicated and it looks pretty awesome. But that's my time guys. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and share it. If you're new here, give that subscribe button a manly pat on the bum. You can follow me on Twitter, check out the Facebook page, and until I figure out what I'm doing next week, keep learning. Thank you.